A closer look at a model steam turbine generator. This was one of some small steam engines and bits and pieces that I bought recently and I think it's worth looking at. This turbo generator looks like it was built quite a long time ago. It's quite well made and it has good and bad points. Initially I wondered why it had two steam valves so I went on to Google and typed why does my model steam turbine have two valves and the answer is one of them is a stop valve and the other one is a control valve. If you need more comprehensive details I suggest you do a bit of googling. In its own way this is a really nice old thing. It's crude but it's worth resurrecting because the turbine runs very well and I look forward to making an exhaust pipe for it. I'm not too impressed with the dynamo. It looks very homemade and the man from whom I bought this model said it didn't work. He couldn't get a reading on his meter. A couple of days ago when I was running this turbine, when I short circuited the outputs of the generator, I could see sparks. Which means there is some kind of electricery coming out of there. On the steam inlet is a pipe and the part that I'm tapping is designed to take a pressure gauge. And without the pressure gauge air is just leaking randomly from this pipe. That's why I have to put my finger over the end of it. So instead of that I fitted a pressure gauge, a broken pressure gauge. The main linkage has fallen off inside. One day I'll fix it when I get round to it. Normally I don't use these three quarter pressure gauges, they're a bit small and to see what the gauge is registering I need to wear my reading glasses. This hole in the middle at the top is really good, it's an oil reservoir and this means that the main turbine shaft which rotates very quickly always has an oil supply. And the oil seal is quite good. I haven't filled this up for a while and there's plenty of oil left inside it. I've connected a couple of cheap Chinese crocodile clip leads. Look at the state of the red one. These are brand new and the red wire just fell off as it wasn't crimped on properly. Initially to make sure there is some electricity present I short circuit them and as you can hear the turbine slows down so there is continuity. I would normally expect a generator of this diameter and physical size to output around 6 volts. This is my old AVO meter and when I connected the output leads to that nothing showed. But when I connected the leads to this meter I got a reading. When I increased the speed of the turbine I started to get a tangible reading. It's not a lot though. This is on the 2.5 volts DC range. I played about with the valves to see what happened. And what was apparent was the valve slowed down the turbine. One just slowed it down, the other one stopped it. And as you've just seen when I closed both of the valves the pipe blew off. I refitted the pipe to the union using a larger spring clip. Now I can really crank up the turbine. As you can see the faster the turbine goes the more electricity I'm generating. Unfortunately though this turbine uses so much air that the pressure from the compressor starts to drop fairly quickly. This wouldn't happen if I was using steam because the steam would be constantly being generated by the fire in the boiler. And also I would think the turbine runs better on steam because it's denser. The air supply from the 50 litre tank ran down so much that in no time at all the twin compressor units on top of the compressor kicked in to replenish the air that I was removing from the tank. In this state the compressor is not giving much pressure and as you can hear the turbine is not running very fast which of course drops the voltage from the dynamo. While the compressor is pumping back up I thought I'd have a look inside my AVO meter. A couple of things to check. First the one and a half volt battery. I removed this and using my second meter the battery checked out ok. In the top of the AVO meter under the same cover where the battery is are a pair of fuses. One's actually in the circuit and the other one's a spare. When I test this, it's fine. I replaced the battery and the fuse and then tested the AVO meter. And on the ohms setting for resistance, it works fine. I don't know why it didn't register when I initially ran the dynamo slowly when it was only generating about one volt. I would think that this turbo generator running at a high speed would probably generate about two and a half to three volts which is a bit of a waste of time when I think about it. The amount of steam pressure I would have to apply to the turbine, which of course needs generating by some kind of fuel, 
would not really be very practical just to light an LED or small light bulb. What I propose to do is make a new mounting base and as it turns out the mounting base will be the size of this packet of wet wipes which is 7 inches by 5 inches. Before I commit myself to making a base of this size I'm going to try and power a PM Research Dynamo using this turbine and if that is successful then I will use one of those. I don't want the turbine to be revving too high just to generate a low voltage low amperage output. I intend to thoroughly enjoy the experiment, I've never worked on a turbine before. And that is it for now, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.